Um, so Richard, talking about products and process validation in medical devices, first question, why why do we have it? Why do we do it? Really good question, Alex. Uh, it's probably one of the most fundamentally important things that we have to do as part of the design and development process for a medical device. Um, and what we, we have to do uh, for regulatory compliance, we need to have a process that tells us how to correctly design a product and gather all the specification and design inputs for it and make sure they're being delivered in the product and process uh, that comes out the end. So we're trying to make sure the product's right and we can make it consistently. That's effectively what uh, product and process validation is all about. So it's part of the formal design process where we do a series of experiments uh, on the product itself to make sure it's performing as we designed it and on the process that we're using to do this thing called product realization. So it, we're testing the, the mechanisms, the manufacturing methods and instructions to make sure they deliver that product that performs the way we want it to. Um, and that creates a lot of evidence that we use as the basis for regulatory submissions. So what, what makes this difficult, Richard, and what are the common mistakes people make? The common mistakes people make is not planning effectively for this process. It takes up quite a bit of time and resource to, to get this and do it right, uh, depending on what you're doing. And it can include some very big, from a product perspective, some very big expensive ticket items, things like biocompatibility testing that you might have to do on products which are patient contacting. Uh, things like EMC testing to look at medical, uh, um, the uh, electrical safety of products. All of these things would come under the headings of, uh, of product validation. Uh, and when we're looking at process validation, uh, those are things that we need to plan as well, because to do a process validation, uh, it might mean that we need access to manufacturing facilities, we might have to stop production of other products while we're doing these experiments. And that all comes with a cost and a timeline attached to it. So we, we need to plan things as, as we're going through. So that's really, really important. And Richard, is there any other areas that are challenging and difficult um, in products and process validation? Yeah, there are, there, there are two areas I see that cause problems from the perspective of, of a consultant. So I'm often called in because things haven't gone correctly. So these, these are the things I see that have gone wrong that have affected the company moving forwards. Um, and the first is sort of what I call chronology. Uh, and this is how we put together things in the correct order. So when we're looking to make sure our processes have been operated in the right way, we need to make sure that effectively uh, our protocols for these, these validations are well written and they have acceptance criteria built into them so that we have a measure when we do the report of whether we've been successful or not. And often these documents are poorly written uh, and they don't relate back to the performance, the expected performance of the product, I think is the best way of putting it. So we've got to make sure things happen in the right order so that specification comes before test and protocol comes before report and so on. And we've got to make sure that these are really well written documents that, that, that communicate and cover the things that we need to, to cover. So we, we've got to have an understanding of what we're trying to get to. Then we've got to prove we've got there. And that can be broken down to, to, to probably the worst thing I ever see in reports in process and product validation things from a reporting perspective is the failure in the write-up from the users, uh, for, for, to, for the users, from the people who are delivering these articles. You've got to think that the, the output from this app, this often goes out and is seen by notified bodies or by regulators as evidence that you've done something right. So it's really, really important that these documents are, are scientifically valid, 
and and con, you know, conducted to good principles, you know, uh, you know, properly thought out, planned sample sizes and, and test protocols and so on, but that they're well written so people can read them. And the fundamental thing, a lot of people missing these is, is, is a lot of talking around and nobody actually ever saying, ever drawing conclusions, you know, the fundamental conclusions like, you know, the products met the acceptance criteria and it's fit for the market. These are, these are what we're trying to fundamentally prove here. Uh, and we need, we need to actually say that. It, it, our documentation should reflect our conclusions about the status of the product and whether that's good enough for what we want to do going forwards. So we need to make sure that well-written documents that fit together and are scientifically valid. And Richard, does product and process validation vary depending on the product itself? For example, a class one compared to a yeah, class three device? Not so much based on the classification of the product. The endpoints that we're measuring are really uh, driven by the specification of the product and our need from a European perspective to make things like the general safety and performance requirements so sterility testing for a class one product is the same as sterility testing and validation for class three product for example uh, but then you know the, the amount of effort we need to put into it is really based on the complexity of the product so an mri scanner has lots of processes and things going on within it you know, things that are in software hardware all elements that need validation and, and verification as we go go through the development of the product. And, you know, validation of something like that, product validation of an element like that will be pretty complicated. But if you take at the other end, something as, as simple as a, uh, a intravenous syringe, a needle combination, very, very simple product, not a lot of product validation that goes into that, that but the validation of the process that can consistently make 80 million of those a day is another matter completely so the complexity can turn up uh, anywhere based on both on the complexity of the product the complexity of the process that realizes the product um, and how many you're going to make, that, that makes a real difference as well. The regulations tell us that we want to do activities in this area which are proportional to the risk classification of the product. But in reality, we're driven by those elements of the com product complexity, process complexity, and the actual process quantity is the best way I can put it. How many are we going to make? It's a lot easier to qualify something if we're going to make one of them than it is if we're going to make millions and millions and millions of them. Uh, they, they're completely different uh, kettles of fish. And we need to adjust our protocols and our approach accordingly to, to bring that right. And risk management and documentation of approach is a really important technique to bring all that together.